Hello and good evening from your Carlton Community Stadium. I'm Sean Cashmore. Next to me this evening is Craig Barnes. And you join us in this Southern League Premier Division Central Playoff semi-final. It's the teams that finished third and fourth, Leamington versus Redditch United. Before we delve into tonight's action, I think it's only right that we reflect on the Leamington Lions' fantastic cup win on Monday night at the Bescott Stadium in Warsaw. The first ever winners of the Birmingham FA Women's Challenge Vars final and thoroughly deserved as both sets of ladies from Leamington and Coventry City put on a pulsating game that ended 4-2. Once again, a huge congratulations to the ladies on that cup final win. These Leamington and Redditch sides don the boots and take to the grass once again just four days since the final day of the season where they both secured their spot in this season's playoffs. On Saturday, Leamington put in a solid and conclusive display against an AFC Sudbury side who were fighting for their lives to stay in the division. It turned out to be an afternoon of double celebration. The result of the Hitchin Stourbridge game came through as nil-nil and the Sudbury players, staff and supporters celebrated wildly as the news filtered through that they were safe. Tonight's opposition, Redditch, also went into the last game of the season, needing a result to ensure a playoff spot. Having been heavily in the media of late, with first team manager Matt Clark leaving the club for an immediate break in February, Clark's departure tallied with a slump in form for the Reds. But of late, Karen Jackson, who has taken over at the helm, has steadied the ship as they made their late gas push for the playoffs. Ball collected by Redditch short from the goal kick. They try and angle one into the Leamington half. Edwards brings it down into the feet of Williams, and now Leamington will try and escape over halfway. Stewart. Landers still on that right-hand side, has Cranston for company. Landers will try and get his cross in. Instead, he goes near post. First shot on goal of the game. Harrison collected easily at the near post, but Landers got plenty of fire behind it. But in the end, Harrison fielded it well. And Henry Landers, the number seven, looks very interested indeed. He's just eyeing it up as the 23-year-old, looking for his 13th goal of the season. Three-man for all in front of Henry Landers that Harrison has built. Landers is ready, it'll be right-footed, it's up, it's over the wall towards the top corner. Harrison let it go, he was confident, never threw an arm towards it. It dipped down late, but it was never troubling the goalkeeper or the Redditch goal. Yeah, good strike that though, wasn't it? You can tell there's venom in those Landers boots. Really good free kick and just from a shame from a breaks perspective, couldn't quite get it on target. Shurok heads it in field, in towards Edwards. Edwards just had it stolen away from him and then fell to the ground, managed to win the loose ball. And then a couple of challenges just fly in with a bit of angst in the middle of the park, but referee plays the advantage. They were all clean as far as he was concerned. Cleared away by Street, headed back by Cissé. Quainer heads it away, only as far as the number 12 in the middle of the park, which is Owen. Owen now in towards Solman. Solman straps it back forwards towards, he's gonna come back out to Solman again. Over the top of the crossbar, at least by a yard, it cannons off the board that says build it less at BPS above the Leamington fans in that goal in uh, behind that goal probably hit well but just not hit on target Craig Barnes exactly yeah I mean he um, had very little time really came to him quite quickly had a quick decision to make whether to shoot or to try and build them pass out to his um, to his teammates whatever we'll decide to shoot and uh, comfortably over in the end but a bit of drama for a split second It'll be taken left-footed by Jordan Cranston. He angles it in towards the 18-yard box, all the way through towards the far post, bounces down inside the 18-yard box. Meredith has to try and hook away, doesn't. Bounces down again. Did it come off Meredith last? Yes, it did. It's going to be a corner. It was a really good free kick in towards a dangerous area by Cranston. A Redditch man got there first. Meredith couldn't quite clear his lines. Hawkins didn't know if to stick or twist and to come for it. And in the end, Meredith just had to help it out of play for a corner. The first of the second half, and Redditch have a chance to send the big man up from the back. Flanagan. Wallacott, Cranston, they all take up their, their positions on the edge of the 18-yard box. Cissé raises both of his arms at the far post. It'll be swung in again, drilled in towards the far post. King has a header. It's just wide. It was a good header. In fact, it was Ryan Wallacott who just got there in front of King. It was a good header, connected with it well. But in the end, it was a good two or three yards wide. And I think that's the first time Redditch have um, been able to connect with a corner. Uh, got decent connection on it, did Wallacott. But as you say, just wide of the post the assistant referee on this near side, Philip Lindsay. 
waved his flag. And again, Redditch don't want to stand on ceremony. They want to get us back underway. It's good. It's into the feet of Johnson. Johnson makes tracks towards the edge of the area. Inside the penalty area now. Onto his left foot, onto his right foot. Twists and turns. Sends it towards the near post. Hawkins positioned himself well just to cut out any low cross towards the near post and clutches it again gratefully into his chest. But like they did in the first half, Craig, Redditch are just making the early running. I was going to make that exact same point. You know, um, that Kim, uh, Jackson, the Redditch boss, will be delighted with how his team have started in the second half. Very much on the front foot. Left back for the breaks to keep an eye on Alex Cameron is Meredith and Quayner. And Leamington will line up for this long throw that will be hurled in by Evans towards the heads. Edwards can't win the flick on. It's going to work its way back out from a Redditch head towards Evans, who's going to try and swing his cross. Great turn by Evans. Left-footed cross in towards the near post. Helped away by Redditch, and now they'll try and counter with Cameron. Cameron looks for support and has support on this left-hand side with Johnson. Johnson now. Quayner has to shape him up. Quayner brings Johnson down. And Quayner, he could be the next one in the book here. He was wrong side of his man and he is going to end up in the book he pleads his innocence Redditch want a red they think he was last man I think it's fair to say that Dan Meredith was covering as well so it was never a red it was certainly a yellow it wasn't a smart challenge from Quayner but Redditch really broke at pace and as Cameron sprung away and tried to free up Johnny Johnson Johnny Johnson was bearing down on the 18 yard box and Quayner just clipped his heels it's Gif Musa, the former Leamington player who's come on for Redditch, and now it's going to be Chirac who's withdrawn for the breaks, and Tyrone Barnett who will come on to take his position. Barnett, 44th appearance now for the breaks, looking for his 11th goal, having scored 10 already this season, the former Hereford man. Six foot three, and he'll certainly be trying to put that frame about. Edwards wins the flick on. Landers just tries to find Barnett initially, but it's cleared away easily by Redditch, and now they'll try and break again. Ball over the top. Johnson into it. Johnson left-footed. Side netting. Looked like it might have took a deflection off either Rob Evans or Callum Hawkins. It did because it's going to be a corner. But again, Redditch worked that angle well on this left-hand side. Again, they managed to pick out the ball over the top towards Johnny Johnson. And as he bared down on goal, Rob Evans slid in. Hawkins protected his near post. Redditch just enjoying possession inside their own half and trying to build. Musa, Solomon, Cranston on this left-hand side right in front of us. Cranston looks for his options. Johnson comes short for him. Johnson, though, loose challenge, really well challenged by Edwards. And Kelly Evans picks up the loose ball. Ewan Williams for the breaks. Meredith, neat. Williams again. Ford come the breaks within 10. Williams cantering towards the edge of the 18-yard box. He's got support in Landers. He's going to still go inside the 18-yard box. Himself has a go. Side netting. Ewan Williams, potentially one of those situations where you have too many options. Couldn't make up his mind what was best. In the end, took it on himself, but it was only into the side netting. Well, he rode his luck. He got into the penalty box. Um, he did really, really well. And I think he just thought, do you know what? This is it, this is the time. And pulled the trigger, but from, uh, from his persuasion, it's the wrong option. And unfortunately, just dragged it into the side netting. Craig Barnes next to me, live from Yukart Community Stadium in the Southern League Premier Division Central Playoff semi-final. It's third versus fourth, and it's still Leamington nil, Redditch United nil. And we are going to tick into half an hour of extra time here at Yukart Community Stadium, because there goes the referee's full-time whistle, and we will have half an hour, 15 minutes either way, to see if one of these sides can keep us away from penalties. But it's been a tight game. It's been a game full of anxiety. It's been a game where neither side had too many clear-cut opportunities, Craig Barnes. No, exactly. I mean, um, it's just, as you say, I mean, it's uh, for me personally, it's, it's lacked a little bit of quality, but both teams are so desperate not to lose that they're almost making sure they don't um, at the detriment of too much attacking play. Very few shots on target, n a few nervy moments, as we say, tense, and the tension in the air for sure. Um, it's still 2-0 to AFC Telford. And by the way, is that ever into injury time as well? Flanagan, neat chest control and then works out to the right hand side where Danny King's got plenty of space to canter into. King keeps doing away from Kelly Evans, chips one in towards the penalty area, collected down by Johnson, falls down towards the far post, off the post, Leamington escape, it was an effort on goal, I think it came in from the far side where it was Solman, I think he worked it towards the back of the net, in fact no it might have been Alex Cameron, it was a 
load of bodies in our way. We couldn't quite see it clearly, but Callum Hawkins turned and watched it, and it came off the post, and Leamington escaped. Redditch come again. King down the right-hand side, works it in towards the area, and then Cameron misses a free header on the six-yard box. He could have turned it home. Callum Hawkins was planted, and Cameron missed a free header. Redditch have had all the chances here in the first half of extra time, and they haven't been able to take the, break the deadlock. You're right about that first one. It was um, Callum Hawkins. He knew it was past him. He couldn't do anything about it. And then he saw it bounce off the post. And then he worried about rebounds and where it's going to go. And uh, yeah, very worrying from that point of view. Yeah, it was Paul um, Edwards, the uh, press secretary, making me aware that uh, potentially Callum Hawkins got a touch. Well, if it is a save from Callum, Callum Hawkins, it's a fabulous save because it didn't look like he got anywhere near it but if he has got a touch to it it is some save to touch it onto the post Alex Cameron who I think was the man like I say who hit the post it fell down to Johnny Johnson inside the area he just worked it into the feet of Cameron Cameron looked for all the money like he should score but he hit the post and Leamington escaped here comes the long throw from Evans sends it in towards the heads up goes Barnett Barnett doesn't quite win it falls down inside the penalty area and it's cleared away by a red shirt Meredith will help it back in everyone stays on side and Edwards wins the flick on in towards Theo Street who's still up from the back headed away by by Flanagan Williams collects however Williams just has it taken off his toes and Kelly Evans will have to mop up and does so infield towards Joe Clark Clark Evans Evans sends a ball towards the far post where Barnett's arriving oh it's a great save by Harrison can it be headed home no it's off the line what a save from Harrison what a ball in by Evans he whipped one towards the far post there was Tyrone Barnett firm header brilliant save by Adam Harrison and then it was headed over his own crossbar by a reddit shirt to make sure that Leamington couldn't touch it home corner to Leamington well, Barnett looked destined to score didn't he but from point blank range Harrison outstanding save there um, keeps the score at nil-nil. Redditch have got Adam Harrison in goal, a back three of Wallacott, Flanagan and Cranston. It's a midfield five essentially, Gift Moose has come on for Moose Cisse and then Danny King's been wide right, Bradley Burton's been wide left, Aaron Solman and Morgan Owen have been pretty central and then Alex Cameron and Johnny Johnson have been up top for Redditch as we just break off because Meredith's got space down this right-hand side. Here comes down Meredith for Leamington. Meredith all the way to the edge of the 18-yard box. Meredith gets his cross, the cross ball, appeals for handball, but there's nothing doing there. Cranston tucked his arms into his chest. May have come off an arm, but he couldn't put his arms anywhere else. Clark recycles it over towards Ewan Williams. Leamington still in opposing territory. Quainer, long ball in towards the box. Can Barnett get there? Yes, he can. Heads it, goal was off the crossbar. Headed home! Leamington have turned it home! It ball came down off the crossbar, and who else is going to score in a big occasion who else is going to get there for Leamington it's that man as always Jack Edwards his 66th goal for the club and this one may be crucial this one may be important the ball was worked in Tyquana towards the far post Tyrone Barnett leapt once more Harrison couldn't get there it came down off the crossbar and in came bundling Jack Edwards to turn it home Leamington take the lead in the semi-final it is Leamington one Redditch United nil the goal coming from Jack Edwards and it was a little bit it was a little bit similar from the instant in the first um, period of extra time where Tyrone Barnett leapt like a salmon uh, this time it was too high for Harrison because it cannoned off the crossbar but as you say gambling trying to get there craning every single muscle he could was Jack Edwards bundling the ball home to give the brakes a 1-0 lead well, Jack Edwards, he scored from the halfway line with a free kick against Bromsgrove and that got goal of the season for the club, but I'm sure he would trade them all for that one. It is Leamington 1, Redditch United 0. Redditch will be throwing caution to the wind in these final stages to try and seek for an equaliser into the final 30 seconds and now that is it Leamington have come out on top and what has been a really nervy really tight really anxious semi-final as some of the fans run onto the pitch and congratulate the Leamington players only a couple of them one of them runs straight into the arms of Jack Edwards they're certainly happy with what they've seen the Redditch players sink to their knees they've given it everything this evening it's been a tale of two defences it's been a tale that went to extra time but in the end the story has finished with Leamington coming out on top courtesy of a Jack Edwards goal after Tyrone Barnett hit the crossbar Edwards was there to turn it into an empty net and that goal has been enough for Leamington to book their place in the playoff final Craig yeah I mean what can you say Sean that was just edgy from start to finish 
and uh, I saw somebody pose the question who was our man of the match do you know what I genuinely could not give you a man of the match it was a team of the match really there were so many individual gritty gutsy performances so, you know, I would say Tyrone Barnett and Joe Clark coming off the bench equally had such a vital part to play in this victory uh, kept um, having to dig deep Redditch played really well I thought you know if you're a Redditch fan listening in you could be proud of your team tonight you, you know they left it all out on the pitch that's for sure but Leamington found a way to win and that's what you have to do in the playoffs well Leamington they're just taking all the plaudits of the home fans Tyrone Barnett comes across to take the plaudits it was his header that hit the crossbar that was turned home by Jack Edwards but well it was the fourth meeting of these two sides this year Leamington ran out 3-0 winners in the league both home and away in the FA Trophy it was the Reds who came out on top with a 2-0 win but in the playoff semi-final it is Leamington that have just edged it here at Yukart Community Stadium it is finished at Yukart Community Stadium Leamington won Redditch United nil thank you to always as all of you have joined us this evening we've had incredible numbers I can't thank you enough but we're going to leave you now this evening here at Yukart Community Stadium. It's been a real anxious evening, but in the end, Leamington have come out on top. Thank you again to everyone that's joined us. It's finished here in the Southern League Premier Division Central Playoff semi-final from Yukart Community Stadium. Leamington won, Redditch United nil. Paul, a very cagey affair out there for the playoff semi-final against Redditch. Leamington coming away with the win, though. You must be ecstatic with that performance. I'm certainly pleased. Um, yeah, I'll probably call it sort of half 20 past six with the players. I thought this one might go all the way. Um, possibly the the nature of the game. There's probably nobody wants to lose this mindset as much as you try and get your players to be positive. Uh, nobody wants to lose the game, so it's probably dropping to a deeper block quicker. Um, then as the game goes on, you can start into 60, 70 minutes. You certainly don't want to lose it then. And um, I think both both defences structures were on top, both very well disciplined. Um, I felt to said to the players half time, and it, you know, just I thought we just just it was certainly just a couple of moments of quality might win us. And to be fair. We did have a couple of good moments of quality and certainly got some decent delivery, a little bit of play, got some decent deliveries uh, with Tyrone coming on, which we got a couple of feedbacks off that. Um, they've had their couple of moments, theirs didn't go in and probably our one has. Um, you know, they've had a good finish to the season. Well, listen, it was one of them nights. We could have won it 1-0 one, one or they could have won it 1-0 really. Um, I've been involved in a lot of these. and um, I'm yet to play in a good one. And I must have been double figures in playoff games, so uh, I know what was coming. Um, yeah, so listen, but when when you're in a game like this, you just you know the the fourteen players that have played tonight, they've all got to be switched on to what you're doing. We had to certainly defend our box really, really well because of the threat from them with the, the decent deliveries and the targets they've got. When we needed Callum, he pulled off that one fantastic save, just like their boy did from Tyrone, I think. Um, and then, you know, like you say, that good bit of quality from us, it's something we do quite a bit. If we get the ball right and tie around in the right areas, then we're looking. You, you can't call it a second phase because I suppose hit the post, the par's the second phase. But then Jack again, you know, so many times in his 400 and odd games, he's come up with important goals for us. So, um, another important one tonight. So, listen, the season goes on for another game. So, it's, a, it's an amazing effort by the, the players because I honestly thought this year could be a year where we might just have to rebuild a bit and consolidate and... Um, uh, but you know the, 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 this group never stop amazing me really. So you know, the, the, the application they've showed tonight um, to make sure that they um, didn't get beat, didn't concede a goal. It's another clean sheet. It's another clean sheet for Callum. And um, you've always got half a chance in these playoff games if you can keep the back door shut. So no wonderful efforts. One downside is we did see uh, Adam Walker come off. Is that uh, due to an injury or? Yeah, his uh, calf really tightened up in the first half, so we knew that might be a problem. It, what I'm absolutely baffled at is that we're, we're playing at step three football and we've played 50 odd games and we go, go go into a extra time and you can't use the extra sub. You know, 
you can do that in the FI Cup and, and every other major tournament. And uh, those poor bladers, all of them have been at work. So Sanford Redditch, the, the players were dying. At, you know, you look at both sets of players. Neither set deserves to lose that game. They've given everything. You know, the quality, a bit of quality, yes. Um, bloody hell. I don't think supporters, either sets of supporters come out and said the players didn't give everything because they did. Uh, same with the Redditch players. Um, but that's baffling, that is. That's a bizarre decision. And the league needs to look at that for, for next season because these players have played 50 odd games. They've played Saturday. They've travelled Saturday, some of them. And then, you know, a game like today. Um, it's, how you end up, it's how you end up with injuries and try and protect them a little bit. By the time you get to extra time, you'll be able to use all five subs just to, uh, to help the players out. But listen, there we go. But um, like you say, showed loads of resilience, character. Um, and uh, yeah, and you know, sometimes you have to find a way. And uh, we found a way tonight, so great feeling for everybody, and uh, super crowd, super atmosphere, and uh, we're delighted. The, I know the emotions are very high right now, and something you probably don't want to think about is Monday's game. It has been confirmed it is going to be against Telford, uh, opposition that we know quite well. What's your thoughts going into that Monday's game? What can we expect? <laughs> Tough game, yeah. I mean, listen, I've, um, I think possibly, I think they Second half of the season, they've probably been the best side in the league, haven't they? Uh, home form's really strong. We know what's coming. We've been there before, um, many a season. Um, I think the important thing for us now, this took a lot out of us tonight. We've, we've got to, we'll be in the weekend. We'll try and recover, get everyone going again. And um, listen, we'll, we'll certainly have to be better than we were a few weeks ago at Telford. Uh, that's a certain. So I think we will be. Um, but what an occasion! Probably a sellout. I was at a playoff game there years ago when Robin Larry were there. It was like six thousand people there. The atmosphere was electric. Um, um, you know, listen, I think with home form and their current run of form, they'll start as favourites. But um, you know, but um, you know, we uh, we tend to do all right in playoffs.